Hey guys, I know I haven't done one of these uh, commentary videos in a while, but um, since it's been a kind of a crazy few days, last few days, week or so in terms of the Saints offseason with the draft going on and the Saints getting Tyron Matthew, which is awesome. Uh, it's like a huge game changer for our team this year. But there's been a lot going on, so I figured instead of just having the usual highlights going on, I think I want to kind of bring back the commentary a little bit just to start talking about some stuff and kind of expanding the content here. And I think the last time I did one of these was probably – last one I can remember is when the Saints lost to the Bucks in the playoffs. I made a recap video about that. Or maybe during that off season. I don't exactly remember. But it's been a very long time since I've done one of these. Um, but, yeah, I think I'm going to kind of try to make more of these during the off season and hopefully into this current upcoming season – making some game recaps and stuff like that, which I think could be cool. But I think I'm going to bring it back and see how it goes. This is going to be kind of a um, – I don't really want to call it a test, but I haven't done one of these in a while, so let me know what you guys think. Um, the plan for this video is that I'm going to re kind of recap the Saints draft and grade it because that was, what, about a week ago or so ago because I'm recording this on a Friday. So I'm going to recap, recap and grade the draft, the Saints draft, that is, obviously. And then I think I'm going to discuss – a little bit of Tyron Matthew because, you know, that was that's kind of the recent buzz going around is Tyron Matthew. But the main things I want to talk about is Tyron Matthew and Chris Olave and kind of Trevor Penning a little bit because that's kind of goes into with our first round. But mostly Chris Olave and Tyron Matthew because those are the big – um the two main additions to our team that's happened in the past few days I want to discuss. So let's go ahead and get into the draft. Um So the Saints originally had picked 16 and 19 going into the first round, but we traded up – with the, who was it? I think it was Washington. Uh, we traded up with Washington to get the 11th pick in the first round. And we gave up the 16th pick in the first round. And we also gave up our third and fourth round pick. Which some people would say is too much. But honestly, I think the need at wide receiver was far too much. Even if Michael Thomas comes back fully healthy and he's that guy again that we saw in 2019. I still think getting a first-round wide receiver was necessary, and I love that we were aggressive with the need of wide receiver. We traded up, and we it seemed that we really did not give a fuck what we had to give up to get a receiver. We got our guy, Chris Olave, because I do not think he would have been available at pick number 16. So I'm, even though it was only five spots we traded up, I think it was necessary because, as you saw, we picked Chris Olave, and then right after the Lions traded up to the pick right after us to get Jamison Williams. So... That was kind of the the part of the draft where everyone was taking receivers, and if we didn't trade up, I think we would have been we wouldn't have been able to get a receiver. And I, I think it's just the need has been too necessary for too long. I know y'all saw Kevin White running routes last season and dropping every pass that was thrown to him. That shit was awful. I don't want to see that ever again. Now we're gonna have, assuming everything goes as planned, we're gonna have Michael Thomas, Chris Olave, uh, Marquez Callaway as the third. Um, there's even some talks of Jarvis Landry coming to New Orleans, so if that happens, that would be a great slot receiver. And we still have Deontay Harris as our returner and also slot man. We have Traquan Smith, who is not a good starting receiver, but as a five or a six, that's a solid receiver you can get. And you're also getting blocked out of him, so that's pretty solid. And who else do we have in our wide receiver? I think that's pretty much it, but that's that's a good wide receiver room. You just went from, like, the worst wide receiver in court in the league without Michael Thomas to arguably one of the best with Michael Thomas and Chris Olave. But anyway, let's grade the draft pick. Chris Olave is a clear A+, plus, without a doubt. I don't care what you're giving up to get him. Chris Olave is the perfect fit for the Saints as the wide receiver two option. So I think this is – I mean, I don't, know what else more, I don't know what else more you can say. Chris Olave is the perfect fit for the Saints, exactly what we need. And he's going to open up so much more because not only is he a compliment to Michael Thomas, he gives Jameis Winston another option to throw to. Which is huge because, I mean, before Jameis got hurt, you know, we were 5-2 and two, and things were going great. Jameis' stats weren't exactly, like, eye-opening, like, oh, my God, MVP. But he had, what, 14 touchdowns, three interceptions in, like, seven games. He was throwing to literal Walmart employees. His number one receiver was Marquez Callaway. And his number two, Traquan Smith, didn't even play until, what, week seven? So most of Jameis' time, he had Marquez Callaway – Deontay Harris, that's it. He wasn't thrown to nobody else. We had no wide receivers. We had literally no one on our team. I don't know how 
I mean, I know how he won games. It was because of the defense. The defense was insane last year. But we should not have... The fact that we got by like that is insane. We beat the Packers. We, we scored 38 points against the Packers. Not even going to worry about the three points that our defense allowed because that's not what we're talking about right now. We're talking about the offense right now. Jameis Winston threw five touchdown passes. All to, I think, undrafted players. Because, well, no. Because I guess he had that jet... Uh, that touch pass, the jet sweep or whatever to Alvin Kamara, that kind of counted as a touchdown pass. But besides that, who else did he throw? He threw to Juwan Johnson twice. He's uh, technically a tight end now. He threw to Deontay Harris for a touchdown. Who else did he throw to? Someone else had a touchdown. I'm trying to think of his name. Chris Hogan. Chris Hogan had a touchdown. He retired that season, which is kind of weird. But yeah, I mean, the fact that he's going to have Michael Thomas and Chris Olave to throw to, that's insane. Marquez Callaway got by as a wide receiver one last year. He's not even close to number one option. And he had, I believe, like 600 yards or something like that, which is solid. I mean, he made some good progress last year. Now, imagine him as a wide receiver three. I mean, that's great for this team. So, Chris Olave is obviously an A+. This offense can definitely go places this year, especially because Chris Olave is a really solid deep threat. And Jameis, we all, as we saw last year before he got hurt, he has an insane arm. We all saw that on the Bucks. He has a great arm. So, if Michael Thomas continues to get better in those underneath routes, which I think those underneath routes are going to go a little deeper this year because Jameis has an arm, a big arm. It's not going to be – I mean, obviously, Michael Thomas is great at the slants or whatever, those in routes, those out routes, you know, all those short to intermediate routes. But I think you're going to see those go a little deeper this year just because of the fact that Jameis can stretch the field a lot more. And you're going to have Chris Olave stretching the field. So, you're going to have Michael Thomas – for those underneath routes, if the safeties bite down on them, Chris Olave is going to be open over the top. That's going to be huge for this team. I mean, it cannot be understated how huge that is for us. So Chris Olave is a clear A plus. That that's not even. I don't care what you have to give up for him. That's that's an A plus. Now the other main draft pick I want to get into is Trevor Penning, who we got at nineteen, and we didn't trade up or anything for him. That's just what we had. Now. Trevor Penning isn't exactly the best offensive lineman from the draft. I think he's considered to be the fourth or fifth best lineman. But the thing is, we needed a tackle. That's all that matters. We addressed the need with the loss of Teron Armstead going to the Dolphins. Now, you have a solid, I think if we didn't have Trevor Penning, I think the main, I think the 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 person who would have taken over at tackle would have been James Hurst. And he's solid, don't get me wrong, but I'm not exactly, he's not exactly like, a good starter, you know, like he could be starting week one just because Trevor Penning's a rookie, but Trevor Penning needed to be drafted just because he addresses the need, and he, I mean, it's it's the need we needed the tackle. Now, the main concern with Trevor Penning is penalty problems and stuff like that because once he got drafted, I know a lot of y'all probably saw those clips of him, I believe, at the Senior Bowl, just getting absolutely bullied by defensive linemen and holding. And, just either getting manhandled or holding it all over the place. And I, th- I think the main thing with Trevor Penning discussed by the Saints is that he's a – or I don't know if it was by the Saints or just by, like, uh, people at the draft and stuff like that, but he's a project. He can definitely be – I think – I don't know how you would describe it, but he's definitely, like, a work in progress. And I think if you can fix these uh, these technique problems, he can be a really good lineman in this league. Um, we just kind of have to see how that goes. It's going to be very uh, iffy for a little while, but I think if you wanted to grade this, that would be kind of a – I'd give it an A- minus to a B just because you fulfilled the need that you needed to and you didn't have to give up too much to get him. Um, But he's not the best. You know what I mean? So I think I would give it a B, a solid B on that draft pick because you addressed the need. He's not the best, but you didn't have to trade up or anything to get him. You used your your main aggression in the draft – to get the your guy at wide receiver. So I think that's great for this team. A uh, great first round. Um and yeah, that's really I mean really solid. We going into the draft, all the fans wanted a wide receiver and a tackle. And that's exactly what we got because we traded up with Philadelphia to get two first round picks and immediately that goes what goes into everyone's mind is a wide receiver and a tackle. That's exactly what we got. Good job by the Saints. Um so, yeah, I'm not really sure I want to go into the rest of the draft just because, I mean, who else have we got? We got, I think, Alante Taylor at corner in the second round, which I believe was a solid pick, but it was also really confusing because safety and D-tackle and all kinds of stuff 
who are more concerning needs than corners because we have three solid corners already. Marshall Lattimore, Paulson Adebo, and Bradley Roby. And even Chauncey Gardner-Johnson technically counts as a corner because he's been mostly playing in the slot. Um, so I'm not really exactly sure why we got him because we're not, we'd, uh, according to Dennis Allen, um, we're not really planning on moving him to safety. He's going to be a corner. Now, I know we did end up getting Tyron Matthew, which I guess maybe was the plan at first. We were just going to get best player available. And then if we didn't get a safety, we were going to end up getting Tyron Matthew because that ended up happening a few days after the draft. I'm not sure if the talks were already happening during the draft or just or if we just went super aggressive directly after because we didn't get a safety. I don't know. But we got Elante Taylor. He's all right, I guess. Uh, probably pretty good corner depth. I don't really know much about him. Um... We don't have a third. We didn't have a third and fourth round pick because we used that to get Chris Olave, which is fine with me. Uh, who did we get in the fifth round? We got a linebacker named Some Jackson. What's the dude? It was Demarco Demarco Jackson, I believe, was his name is. I don't know much about him. Probably not gonna make the team to be honest with you. He's a linebacker. Uh, we have a stacked linebacker room already, especially if we end up re-signing Quan Alexander at some point. Um, I don't think he'd be touching the field. I'm not sure if he'll make the team, so I'm not sure I really want to grade that. And then we did end up getting a defensive tackle in the sixth round. Jordan Jackson, I believe, which I think is a good pick. We addressed the need of D-tackle. We really need a defensive tackle depth. But like I said, I don't know much about this guy just because he's from the sixth round. Um, but you did address the need of defensive tackle a little bit. So that's good. But I think I would have liked to see the Saints address defensive tackle earlier. Or maybe we'll get a veteran D-tackle in free agency or something. Because I just don't. there's not much there besides David Ondermata. So, we'll kind of see how that goes. But, yeah, that's much. That's pretty much all the draft I really want to cover. I know I mostly talked about Chris Olave and the Janus and all that stuff the whole time. But, I mean, that's that's kind of what we're here for, right? I mean, y'all aren't really here to see me talk about Jordan Jackson and DeMarco Jackson. Y'all y'all are here for Chris Olave, Michael Thomas, and Jameis Winston and Tyron Matthew talk. Let's talk about Tyron Matthew now. The main need after the draft that really stood out was safety. As you heard from Dennis Allen right after the draft, he said there, or I think it was Mickey, either Dennis Allen or Mickey Loomis, the general manager of the Saints. He said there was one glaring need after the draft, and you kind of knew what that was. I think that's what he hinted at. He was hinting at safety and the talk with Tyron Matthew that had been going on. So we did end up getting Tyron Matthew. I believe it was on Monday, this last Monday. We signed him for a three-year, $33 million, $33 million deal, which is great. And I think Tyron Matthew was, I think by this season, going to be 30 years old. And this is the perfect fit for the Saints. He's coming home finally. LSU legend, as we all know, Tyron Matthew, who played with the Cardinals. I think he played for the Texans for a year, and he's been with the Chiefs the past couple of seasons. So basically what his role is going to be, I think we're all thinking, he's going to replace basically what Malcolm Jenkins did. He's going to be that strong safety, in the box, blitz, play the run type deal. Not so much you know, deep safety. I think that's going to be more so a P.J. Williams or a Marcus May type deal who we got from the Jets to replace Marcus Williams um so I think that's really what this defense really needed we really just needed the safety we have Marcus May and Tyron Matthew back there this defense is going to be insane next year we're we have depth and we're great at all three levels I mean it's kind of weird how this team is a defensive team now but that's kind of how it is for the past couple seasons I've ever since really 2017 this defense has gotten better and better every single year and if we stay somewhat healthy next year, like, I'm literally just somewhat healthy. Just, like, last season was bad. Last season was the, we were just a team that just, we were just chosen to just be destroyed with injuries. Next year, if it goes just half, just half decent in terms of health, we're going to be, we're going to be a force to be reckoned with next year. I'm not even that concerned about Sean Payton being now, because although he's a great play caller, you still have the pieces in place to make it happen. Pete Carmichael, the current offensive coordinator, has what it takes to call players for this team and make the offense what it needs to be. He's been with Sean Payton for a very long time. And Dennis Allen's going to continue to do what he does on the defensive end. And I have lots of faith in this team to be great next year. And as we know, the NFC is kind of declining a little bit. Not a little bit, a lot. Most of the good quarterbacks from the NFC have gone to the AFC now. The AFC is going to be insane, but we're not worried about that because you know we're in the NFC. Um, I honestly think this team is a top-four team in the NFC because what you got, you got the Bucks, the Rams, Green Bay. Those are three main teams that stand out. But Green Bay lost Aaron Rodgers. Not, not, shit, not Aaron Rodgers. I meant uh, Devontae Adams. So who knows what's going to happen there. Aaron Rodgers can still get it done, but they're not going to be 
as good as they were unless they make a drastic change, but I don't think they will. You got the Bucks, obviously, Tom Brady, you know, whatever. Most of them are back. But the Saints have kind of owned the Bucks. Not kind of. They have clearly owned the Bucks the past two years, except the playoff game, but we don't talk about that. The Saints have owned the Bucks. They have their number. And I don't think it's crazy to say the Saints can beat the Bucks twice again, especially if they're healthy with Michael Thomas and Jameis now in this revamped defense with Tyron Matthew in the mix. Um, so if the Saints stay healthy and they win, you know, 11, 12, 13 games, they can win this division because they could definitely have the tiebreaker over Tampa again in terms of head-to-head. They did last year. They beat them twice, but they just had so many games where they didn't have players like the Dolphins game. Everyone had COVID. Everyone was out. We had Ian Book, an offensive lineman I have never heard of in my life, which is crazy to say because I know I'm, I'm a diehard Saints fan. I know almost everyone on this team from the back of my head, but there were people playing I didn't know existed. That's bad. Um, Let's see. You had the Bills game where we had we didn't have Kamara. We had Trevor Simeon. And who was our starting running back? T- Tony Jones? Because we didn't have Mark Ingram that game either. That shit was bad. Um, You had all those games Kamara was at. We had the game, the Titans game, where we lost because our kicker couldn't make extra points. That shit was bad. You're not going to see that this year. We have Will Lutz coming back. He's going to make his field goals. He's a good kicker. So, I mean, you may not think that's a, that's a big deal. But with him coming back, if we need just those simple extra points or field goals to just close games out we're going to have that next year that's huge so i mean yeah there's not a whole lot much else to say i think i kind of said everything i want to talk about i addressed Jameis, the revamped offense with chris olave everyone coming back um the only main question mark for me right now is the offensive line but we still have ryan ramchek eric mccoy is only going to get better Trevor Penning has what it takes to be good. Andrews Pete's coming back at left guard. Now, I know we don't really like Andrews Pete because he always has his one or two plays a game where he gets put on his ass and does something really retarded. But uh, don't be fooled. He is, especially compared to the booty butt cheeks players we had playing O-line last year. I want to see the Ruiz. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be better. Andrews Pete is a solid guard. I think he's a little overpaid, if I'm going to be honest. He should not be getting paid as much as he is. And he should not have made three Pro Bowls in his career. That's kind of bullshit. But he is a solid guard, and he's going to make the team better. I know y'all are going to disagree with me or whatever, but that's my honest opinion. Um, And, yeah, this team's going to be good. And uh, in a few days, the Saints schedule will be coming out. So I think I'm going to make a video kind of looking at the schedule, not necessarily making a record prediction, but just showing you guys the schedule and kind of seeing where we're at. Because you don't really know where this team's going to be until you see kind of how the schedule all plays out. So we'll see how that unfolds in the next few days. I think I'll make a video on that. But, yeah, I talked about everything I want to talk about. Talked about Chris Olave. Talked about Tyron Matthew a little bit. Gave my thoughts on that. Um, And, yeah, I think that's that's kind of everything I wanted to touch on. Let me know what you guys think of the comments here. I kind of wanted to make it a – I could have rambled on much longer, but I have 18 minutes on right now. So I think that's that's enough for today. Um, Next time I make a talking video, it'll probably be the same schedule. But let me know what you guys think. I might, I, I want to, I, I think I want to start doing this, especially during the season. But if I commit too much to it, you know, I don't want to get worn out. That's kind of why I didn't do it this year because I had so much going on and just decided to not go that route. But maybe I'll do it this year. Let me know what you guys think. Um, so I think this is something I can definitely do. Just like I said, let me know. Give me your feedback. What do you think of the Saints draft? And what do you think of Tyron Matthew? And how many, how far do you think the Saints can go this year? So uh, let me know that in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. And, uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video.